Welcome back to Talking Shop. I'm Brandon, back with Jesse. Today we are going to kick off episode 18 to talk a little bit about vacuum hold down. Yeah, it's going to be a really exciting, really important episode, Brandon. Garrett's over here making all these like gestures at me like he's telling me. I think he told me to steal second. I'm not sure. He said round third. That's Is that what it was? Right. Round third? Go for home. Go home. I don't know what he's telling me to do over there. I think he doesn't like the way get my Get down, bike. he's yeah. saying. Where's where he supposed to get down? Yeah, what am I getting down for? Why are you? Is there slide? something? I, is that yeah. slide? Is this a slide? I'm, You're I'm not very. You were. You were more than an athlete, were you, Gary? Yeah. Jeez. He's sitting over there. He looked like he was making a, like one of those, uh, balloon animals. You know. He, yeah. His hands were going in every direction. He's kind of a clown. He is kind of a clown. I don't know. He was over there doing something. I don't. I want to talk to you. I don't really know what he's doing. Like I said, we're trying to have a serious conversation about vacuum hold down. Right. And I got this guy over here making balloon animals. Thanks, Garrett. We need to distract us. I stole second, and I got a. He balloon. slid into home. Yeah. And I got a balloon animal. A, a giraffe. <laughs> a giraffe. Looks like a poodle. Oh. Well, it's a pretty poor poodle. Well, Garrett made it. No, it's next really long. <laughs> I think the poodle got ran over. Um, I think its head came untwisted. <laughs> oh, no. I thought it was just a really quiet parrot. Don't worry. I took care of it. <laughs> took care of it. Um, but yeah, we're going to have a special guest today. Yeah, awesome. We have, uh, isn't it Josh Lancaster from Becker with us? Yeah, well, he's not with us yet. His phone is going to be yeah, dialing Yeah, we're going to dial him up. He's not as close, so he, he couldn't make it today. But we have this little thing called the telephone. It works great. Yeah, it's great. So we're going to try calling him up here shortly. And we're going to put him on the spot and say, Josh, talk to us. We didn't talk about this. Are we going to do 20 questions with Josh? I think we should. Should we just do that? I think that? we should do rapid should we start fire. start that off? I think we should do rapid fire. No, that's you the end. You want to finish? It's always the end. Right, Come right, on. Right. You know how this works. All right. Act like you've been here before, Jesse. All right. All right. I'm sorry. Act like you've I'm been sorry. here before. Do you know if you want to start it out fun, exciting, or not? I try to always start off fun and exciting by making fun of Garrett. And then I <laughs> that is pretty with, fun. <laughs> yeah, then I end with fun and exciting, usually making fun of you. That's true. But today but it's somebody today else's turn. we're going to go after Josh. Beautiful. The best part is he's not even on the phone, so he has no idea what's coming yet. That's funny. He's not going to hear this until he listens to it. He's not going to hear it. He's like, they had the plan the whole time. Yes, we did. How dare them. Probably going to see a price increase on Becker Pumps <laughs> next year after this one. Guys, order now. Order now because Becker Pumps are going to make me pay for the jokes I'm about to make on them. Yeah. Uh, no, in all seriousness, though, Becker's a pretty awesome company, and uh, you know they're just a good guest speaker because today what I want to talk about is vacuum hold down. Right. That's an important topic. Yeah, and you know when we talk about vacuum hold down, you know, you – Cannot cut what you cannot hold down, right? Right. I mean, that's kind of a rule of thumb, right? Right. You can't so, just set it on the table and cut. Yeah, exactly. So the most popular way of holding things down really is, you know, vacuum. vacuum. I yeah. mean, air. So that's why we're going to talk about that today. But mm -hmm. there's ultimo. There ultimo. Ultimo. I like that. I like ultimo. It. So there's. Yeah, ding, apparently. Um, the ultimate optimal. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Now we're getting too much. I can't handle all this. I'm going to go back to, there's many ways. <laughs> um, safe. Yeah, safe word, right? Uh, there's many ways for us to hold things down. Um, we have hardware, you know, so you can use screws, nails, things right. like that, yeah. right? Yeah, I heard a lot of guys do plastic nails. Yeah, that's a very popular one. Yep. And then you have, you know, the Raptor nail system. You know, yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, but then you have... Adhesives as well, you know, which people laugh when I say that, but really, I mean, there's a whole level of adhesives. You can use, you know, glues. Double-sided sticky tape. Yeah, double-sided sticky tape, the 3M carpet tape type yep. stuff. Um, we have a few videos actually that showed doing that, but there's a new, you know, I shouldn't say new, there's, there's a more popular one that you see on YouTube lately where guys are actually using super glue. Oh, really? And tape together. That. Yeah, they super glue the, the, you know, the tape too, and then it's... It's kind of cool. Like it's just it's cool how it mm. works. Um, you tape, you know, the one piece of tape to the project, the other yeah. piece of tape to the table, super glue between them. That's not coming. Holds them no. together, and then you, yeah, you just peel wow. the tape off the back of your project. I haven't so, seen that yet. Yeah, it works pretty slick. Um, you know, again, adhesives only work when you're trying to stop against side to side movement. Yep. They do not work when you're working against lift, because obviously adhesives will come Pull off. off. Yeah, right. exactly. So it's you know when you're trying to stop something from sliding side to side, that's where adhesives work. Um, and then you have your physical hold downs, which are your clamps, your fixtures, things like that. Yep. And that's where you start getting into it. But like I said, air is a very popular way of doing it. It's called through flow. You know, that's the most popular. It's nested right. work. Um, that's where you use a spoil board and then your material sits on top of it. But then you also have another, you know, side of it. The flip side is pods. Pods. Yeah. So again, Becker will talk a little bit about that later on. We'll, we'll go through some of that. But um, when we talk about, you know, the through flow, you know, what is vacuum hold down? Let's, let's start there real quick. You know, well, vacuum hold down. 
So you, you beat want, me you to it. Go I was going to read can, it for you. You can go ahead and read it. I was going to give okay. your voice a break. You're going to do a lot of talking I'm gonna with do Josh a lot of talking. today. Go ahead. Yeah. Fire away. Let's yeah. see if you can read this. Vacuum hold. <laughs> see if I can read it. Yeah. Vacuum hold down is an important component in any process utilizing a CNC router. The woodworking industry is a major industry that uses CNC routers. CNC routers usually use one or more vacuum pumps to hold down the processed material, wood, composite, plastics, to the router table. Are you sleeping? No, hey, oh, I'm, Wake sorry. Up. I'm awake now. Wake sorry. Up. sorry, I, you put I me... have to read that way, otherwise I mix oh words my God. up. Yeah. And I don't want the you buzzer to say. I hope everybody else is awake now. Hey, everybody else, if you could wake up again, we're back. Um, <laughs> if you want the definition of vacuum hold down, just go back and listen to Snooze Fest. Yeah, let's, di- let's, let's break this down. Let's digest yeah. this. So, you know, basically vacuum hold down, you know, is utilized to hold your parts down. Right. Now, generally speaking, you have a, a vacuum table. Right. You know, you're going to have a, a table, and in a lot of cases, they look like a waffle grid. Right. You'll waffles, have zones, waffles. waffles. So, waffle hey, grid. Garrett, you're doing nothing. You want to go make me and bring Yeah, can you make waffles? us some waffles? Um, Belgium, please. Um, Syrup. But the, uh, the, you know, vacuum hold down is an important component in, the, in any process of utilizing a CNC, you know, right. realistically, or in, in many of them. Um, the, the woodworking industry in general, though, is the one that really uses it a lot. You know, specifically when you get into things like MDF doors. Right. Or if you start getting into, you know, some of the stuff with the nested materials, like cabinetry, yep. signs, yep. things like that. Very um, popular amongst those. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, as you start looking, you know, now different materials means different hold down needs. You know, as you start looking at plastics, they're slipperier, you know, aluminums, they're slipperier. Yep. So you need to have different types of vacuum. We'll get into that a little bit here. But, you know, vacuum tables generate hold down force because it's basically what it is. It's the difference between vacuum under the part and atmospheric pressure pushing down from above. That's really what it is. It, yeah. People a lot of times believe that the vacuum pump is actually sucking the part down. Right. Like that's not really what it's doing. Right. You know, it, it appears that way because the vacuum's coming from underneath, but it's actually removing the air from underneath the part. It's sucking the air out. Correct. Which is creating atmospheric pressure from above. Yep. Which is then your hold down force. Yep. You know, when you can have more force from above than you have from below, it's not moving. Right. You know, that that's really where it comes into. And that's, you know, every square inch of area exposed, you know, is the difference of roughly 14.7 pounds, you know, is what That's you're pushing lot. down. Yeah. So, you know, you, you want to make sure that you're adding as much force from above as you can. So the difference between zero and, you know, or essentially, you know, and sea level air pressures, you know, that that's really what you're looking at. So when you start looking at 14.7 pounds of force, that's a lot of, of pressure. And it so is. the more that you can put in there, the better you are. Well, w- Really, what do you get into? Well, you start looking at, you want to create CFM for one, because that's the amount of air you're removing. Correct. But then you also need to think about HG, which right. is actually pressure. Pressure. So CFM, you know, it's, you know, cubic feet per minute. You know, that it's, it is what the definition is. It's cubic feet per minute. Pretty simple. Air, per minute. And is the most common way to measure airflow. You know, areas that, you know, typically are measuring airflows are going to usually be in Square units, like square feet, yep. typically. Yep. Um, you know, volume, like a room full of air, essentially. You know, um, area measured in cubic units. Uh, CFM determines how much cubic feet can be moved or exchanged per minute. Is what that essentially means. So, how much air are you moving per minute? Right. The higher CFM, the more you're moving. The more air. You're so, moving. if you have a porous material or something that is a, is very warped, where you're going to have leakage, that's where CFM comes in. You want a lot of CFM. Correct. But the reality is that's not what holds your parts down. CFM does not hold the part. Right. HG is what holds the part. HG. Yep. yep. And in the U.S., the common standard to measurement, you know, is roughly going to be in inches of mercury, you know, HG. So yep. um, rough vacuum, but nevertheless, the, you're looking at your HG measurement. So um, what is that? It, it, essentially, it can be measured in two different ways. You got one method is HG gauge, which is HGV, where the scale chart starts at zero you know, which is atmospheric pressure and right. goes up to 29.92. Is that the max pressure? That's the maximum. That's what you're going to get in the U air in the U S that's what you're going to get in the world. <laughs> so not just the U S <laughs> different yeah. other places, it's not different other places. It's atmospheric pressure. So 29.92, um, which is perfect vacuum. That's a lot of pressure. Perfect vacuum. You can't get better. So the reality is when you start looking at a lot of these pumps, you know, you're going to have pumps that are five, six HG yeah. all the way up to pumps that can get you very close to atmospheric pressure yeah we the reality a- is in a cnc machine you don't need to be all the way up to perfect pressure there's very few applications that require you to get to 29 yeah i haven't even seen a pump that gets to 29 yeah. i think the closest one we carry is 27 27 is the one yeah that's the becker which again josh will talk about here in a yeah. moment um but yeah there's you know perfect vacuum versus 
realistic vacuum is what I call right. it. Um, and Real numbers, achievable yeah. numbers. Yeah, exactly. And one thing you should take into mind is when you're adding up your numbers, generally the rule of thumb is every thousand feet above sea level you go, you lose one HG. Okay. So if a pump is rated for 20, right. that's at sea level. The pumps are always will give you, you know, the manufacturers are always going to give you sea level ratings. Yep. If it's 20 and you're at 3,000 feet above sea level. Well, now you're at 17. Correct. You're at 17. So you got to take that into consideration as well. So as you size pumps, you want to think about that stuff. Not all pumps work for all applications. Right. We get into that a lot. You know, I've got guys that are like, that. well, I bought, my buddy, I bought the same table as my buddy and his, his parts hold down better than mine. Where's your address? And you look up their address and you're like, well, you're 6,000 square feet or 6,000 square feet. You're 6,000 feet above sea level compared to he's at 1,000. Yeah. Of course it's not going to work the same. Yeah, there's a pretty major difference there. Yeah. So, you know, that, that is a huge difference for people. You know, what creates HG? What creates the FM? Well, it's the vacuum pump. I mean, it really it is the pump that starts to create that stuff. You know, right. the vacuum pump is paired based on the application. Depending on the fixturing or the nesting or whatever you're doing, you're going to have a different pump. There's mm-hmm. regenerative blowers and some of the stuff. And that's where... Let's get Josh on the phone. Yeah. Right? We're getting into this. Yeah. Don't you think that's this a good time? Heavy. It's getting heavy and I don't want to... Let's let him talk. Let's let him tell us a little bit yeah, about this stuff. Yeah, he's so, the expert. Let's, uh, let's dial him up here real quick. Becker Pumps, this is Josh. Hey, Josh. It's Brandon and Jesse here with Talking Shop over at Shop Saver. Hey, guys. How are you today? Hey, we're doing really well, man. Hey, uh... Good, sir. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well. Thank you. Good. Good to hear that. Well, we got, uh... We got some listeners right now tuning in because we're we're talking a little bit about vacuum hold down and you know obviously you and I connected earlier in the week and we talked about uh, having you come on because let's be honest who knows uh, more about uh, vacuum hold down than than Josh Lancaster I don't think anybody right <laughs> uh, I would say there's more but I, I'm up there yeah. I don't know rumors around town yeah, is rumors you, around you're the town best. you're the guy so <laughs> yeah we uh, we've been blessed I mean to be honest with you we've talked to you. God, it's been several years or many years that you and I have worked together, Josh. But we've been lucky enough that we've we've gotten to learn a lot about vacuum through your knowledge and honestly through Becker in general. You guys, you guys are the best out there. I mean, you guys are one of the, the top companies, and you know that's why I wanted to get you on the phone because we're talking right now a little bit about the most popular method of hold down, which is vacuum, and obviously what you guys know a lot about. And we kind of explained how vacuum works. You know, we explained that it's actually removing you know, air from under the part to create or increase atmospheric pressure from above. And we explained some of the force stuff, you know, equating out to about 14.7 pounds of hold down on it. Um, But when we started talking a little bit about CFM versus HG, you know, the topic we were kind of leading into was what creates HG or what creates CFM? And the reality, I mean, the answer, the easy answer is the vacuum pump. You know, obviously really the pump is what's helping us create that. But we were talking about how you have to like, pair the right sized pump for the application. And, you know, I kind of want to turn it over to you and talk a little bit about, you know, some of these sales guys out there. I mean, you deal with it, you see it, companies that sell against you guys. And, you know, the sales guys will just sell them a pump without understanding their needs in a lot of applications. And, you know, you you can probably vouch for Shop Saber, but, you know, we're one of those companies that we make sure the pump fits the application. I mean, there's many conversations that you and I have had with a customer to learn a little bit about what are you doing, where are you located, how is this going to work out for you? Because not all people are going to be able to benefit from, from the same exact vacuum pump. Yeah, yeah, very, very true. Yeah, you got uh, inches of mercury or HG, as you, you, you mentioned earlier, and then flow, so yep. which is your CFM. So vacuum and flow, and and pairing those two right, that that's how we that's how we hold stuff. Um, yep. Vacuum, uh, yeah. There's there's leaks through wood, that kind of stuff. So you have yep. to make up that uh, by a certain amount of flow. Yep. Um, and certain pumps can create more pressure or inches of mercury, uh, negative pressure under and help that atmosphere, uh, hold that, that part in place. Yeah. Um, so you gotta have the, the right nature. I can have somebody throw a thousand CFM, but if it's a thousand CFM from a, a ceiling fan, it's not going to hold anything anywhere. Exactly. Uh, I like that. That's so, a sweet ceiling fan like though. Yeah, so you need a certain amount of flow, you know, and, and the design point is uh, generally for vacuum tables is 13 inches of mercury at the table. Yeah. Um, with that said, you're going to have pressure loss across, and every time that leak, uh, we all know a piece of wood is porous. You yep. know, stuff will go through a piece of wood. Yep. Air goes through a piece of wood. So yeah. um, you have to have enough pressure um, to hold the part and then enough flow to make up that leak rate so there's still enough pressure behind that um, part to hold the part in place. That's right. 
Because essentially, so, I mean, realistically, Josh, I mean, if we're correct here, let's let's kind of for those listening that don't know how this works, you know, as the air leaks through, the closer you get to zero, the the less pressure you're going to be having. Essentially, you need to have, you know, you you want you need to have essentially you need to have 100% sealant to get maximum pressure. But if you have any leakage, you're going to start losing some pressure. Correct. Right, absolutely. That leakage, yeah. If you have a pump design that's going to go to 24 inches of mercury, as soon as you put that piece of wood on, it's not going to create 24 inches of mercury. There's going to be leaking through that wood. Um, yep. Different pumps do different and act different as far as flow goes and pressure goes. Some can only max out to 14 or 15 inches of mercury. Yep. Some can max out to 29 inches of mercury. Yep. Um, so you got to have the right need for what you're doing. So. Yep. And that's what we were talking about. We actually touched on that is that, you know, I know shop saver we sell the sk model which gets us like 27 inches which is to be honest with you it's more than anybody typically has ever run into needing for our applications but you know when we start talking about the science behind it you know the one thing that i like to go is the rule of thumb kind of explained as is and you guys taught me this it's five to five and a half cfm for every square foot of surface area you have i mean is that not rule of thumb essentially that's our that's our general rule and that that's held uh in place for as long as we've been making pumps for vacuum hold down on tables so, yeah you know um yeah it's a perfect rule of thumb and it works great now there's always exceptions to the rule but yeah that's our rule of thumb and it works fantastic that's awesome. Yeah. Cause that's exactly what I was gonna say is, you know, yeah, there's always that guy out there that's like, well, I'm getting away with it. You know? And it's like, you're the exception to the rule because sometimes people can do things that are mysterious, but the reality is science is science. And in most applications, five to five and a half CFM minimum per square foot. And that's kind of how we've always sized our pumps. And you see some of these companies out there where you get commission sales guys, they sell on a price, not a solution. And they know they can get away with putting a 10 horsepower pump on a five by 10 table. And will it work? Yeah. For some applications, you're going to make it work. But there's going to be many applications where it's going to be a struggle. And, you know, if you throw one panel up there, there's no leakage. You know that you're sealing it off. You're using gaskets. You're doing a bunch of stuff. You could probably make it work. But who, who's got time for gasketing? That's what I always tell everybody. Nobody got time for that. So you don't want to be gasketing stuff off. You know, like with the shop saver table, we have our high full vacuum. People don't have to use gaskets hardly ever on our tables. And, you know, you want to be able to have a zero setup table. And, and zero setup for us is... You, one one minute you might be cutting one project, the next minute you might be cutting another project entirely, and your spoil board's got to change out. The last thing you got time for is ripping off gaskets and taking glue out or adhesives and all this stuff. Like we just want to slide the, the vacuum pump, you know, or excuse me, the vacuum table off, and you know, slide the next thing on. Like we want to keep moving. And for anybody listening, Jesse can probably explain this. Jesse, did you not lose some money in a bet based on a guy telling you that air flows through a piece of MDF? Maybe. Yeah. Could have happened. <laughs> Could have happened. So for anybody listening, how vacuum hold down works out there is a through flow vacuum is what we call it. It's called through flow fixturing. Um, it was invented because you have that waffle table. Again, waffles. Got to love it. Got to love waffles. Where are you at with those? Yeah. You making waffles over there, Garrett? What are you doing? Um, but Garrett, hey, Garrett, why we got, can you send some to Josh? He, I'm sure he wants some waffles. Jo- Josh, you take oh, some waffles if Garrett's love making waffles. them. There I you love go. waffles. Yeah. He's in. Garrett's in. Garrett, we need three sets of waffles. You want here. fruit or you want syrup? Yeah, yeah. syrup or fruit? Uh, syrup for me. There we go. See? Uh, <laughs> but, God, the, I tell you, the word waffles just gets me every time. But the waffle grid, um, you have your, your piece of MDF. You know, generally, that's what you're going to use is, I always tell everybody, buy the cheapest MDF you can. And I had a guy the other day tell me, cheap MDF? That doesn't exist. Okay, buy the cheaper <laughs> MDF. Like, right? <laughs> cheap doesn't exist anymore because right. MDF's, you know, super expensive now. But you can buy the cheapest MDF you can, the stuff with the least amount of glue in it. You don't want the double refined or any of the door grade stuff for this. You want the cheapest stuff you can with the least amount of glues. And then you're going to skim cut it. You take off 10 to 15 thousandths off the surface. You flip it over, take 10 to 15 thousandths off the other side too. The reason you do that, you're taking off the, the dead cells, if you will, or the, you know, the matted down surface and opening those pores back up. And then you stick it on the table and you turn the vacuum pump on. And believe it or not, the air goes through the natural pores of that MDF. And then you stick your material, whether it's aluminum, melamine, another piece of MDF, whether it's plywood, whatever you're cutting, right. you stick it down on top of that board. And when it gets a hold of it, nobody's moving it. Right, Josh? That's right. That's and right. You got it. Is, is that right, Jesse? That's very true. Yeah, That's Jesse, very, very you true. showed me how strong you were. You flexed those muscles at yep. us, told me that you were going to move that sheet. Is yep. what he told me. The first time he got here, jo- you know, Josh, he gets in here and he goes, I can move this sheet. 
I said, I bet you can't. He goes, oh, I can. I said, you want to bet 100 bucks on it? And I then think uh, I said, no, can we go like 10, please? Yeah, and then he tried to downplay. I said, no, no, you're confident. you got those big muscles. And, uh, yeah, he failed. He, yeah. he couldn't move it. And then I told him he could phone a friend, and he went and got a friend, and him and his friend here could not move it. Is that correct, Chad? Yeah, that's, that's very true. Yeah, Chad's a much larger human than I, and that board went nowhere. Yep, so they didn't move it. So that's yeah, kind of how it yeah. works, you know, from the spoil board standpoint. And, you know, believe it or not, it, it does work. We have videos to proving it. Um, there's nothing holding those spoil boards down. They're just Works too well sometimes. Yeah, works really, really well. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so, you know, when we start talking about it, the next part of that is you have the vacuum table, and in our case, you have zones. So you're going to have several different zones. You can turn them on and off as needed. But really the table is nothing without a pump hooked up to it. <laughs> There's nothing happening. So that's where we introduce you, Josh, is that at that point we got to hook up a pump and there's different styles out there. You know, if you don't mind, can you give the, the listeners a little bit of a, you know, just the reader's digest version of different pump types, you know, what exists, what's the different options they have at that point? Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, frequently ones used in the market, um, uh, regenerative blowers. It's a big fan base blower, a lot of flow, not so much vacuum, um, hook and claw. Um, those line up pretty well as far as vacuum and flow with a, a, a dry rotary vein pump is what is our, the solution we provide. Um, oil ro- oil, um, flooded rotary vane. So there's actually oil in there. Um, oil screw pumps are used sometimes in the market as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and they all have their different drawbacks and advantages, that sort of thing. Um, and the market, I'm not sure, Brandon, if you want me to go into all those details or not. Um, I don't think we have to go um, too deep into those. I mean, I just want to make sure that people realize there's, there's a lot of different options. When we say vacuum pump, they're not all the same. There, there's literally different styles. You got, you know, now on the shop saber side, we have three styles. We have regenerative blower. We have the vein, you know, the vein or root style. And then uh, we have what we call our tangential bypass systems. Um, all three work. All three have their, their time and place in the market. You know, some of them are for, you know, budget-friendly solutions. Some of them are for high-altitude situations. Some of them are going to be for, you know, really porous materials. But in the world of Becker, it's the number one pump we sell. And, and you know, really, let's start with, we keep saying Becker, Who's Becker, Josh? Can you tell everybody about who is Becker? Yeah, who yeah, is Becker? Yeah, and uh, yeah, Becker's a, a, a German company. We manufacture all our pumps in Germany. They've been around since 1885. Um, wow. You know, started in a few different markets, but uh, Becker invaded, invented um, back in the 50s the technology that that rules this world. Um, it's uh, the rotary dry vein pump, yeah. um, and we talk about Pe- Becker. Pecker. Oh yeah. In the market, it's almost always a rotary dry, and we manufacture all sorts of different pumps, don't yeah. get me wrong, but that is the pump for the market. So yeah. a couple of brothers got together, started this company, and we invented dry vein technology, and uh, we have the best dry vein. Um, you can ask all our competitors, everybody out there. We make the best, best dry vein pumps in the world yeah. um, as far as that goes. So, yeah, been around a long time. We've been in the U.S. I'm here in Cuyahoga Falls where our headquarters are in the U.S. and, and Ohio, and we've been here since the early 70s, um, you know, supporting different markets for Germany um, and creating our own markets as that goes. So um, that's kind of who Becker is and uh, uh, what we do. But that dry vein pump is handles it it does create enough flow um for a four by eight table that's our 250 size almost every day of the week uh, which is about 173 open flow and reaches about 24 inches mercury um that's mac back max vacuum um as far as that goes and that handles sawdust very well you put some sawdust in and then that dry vein just sweeps that out the other side um you take that same technology and you throw some oil oil in there it's oil flooded it reaches 29 inches of mercury but oil and uh sawdust don't tend to mix very well and it causes all sorts of problems so you mean sludge isn't cool like, what's that sludge isn't cool sludges are not cool and they're a mess <laughs> to clean up and uh you know if you can clean it up and repair the pump but yeah. i've seen a lot of sludges cause complete failures and new pumps are required at that point so exactly and that i mean it kind of goes back to what we were talking about shops ever picks the pump that fits the application because there are sales guys out there that will push well our pump can produce 29 inches of vacuum pressure but they forget that yeah we're in a dusty dirty environment and uh oil and uh dust don't 
don't really go together real well. Happens all the time. And then yeah. they, you know, you have competitors talk about horsepower. Let me throw 20 horsepower. Well, yeah. you only need 10, you yeah. know, to do it right. So sizing that pump and then making it more, more efficient for the customer is also an advantage. Well, that's what's changed a lot in the market, I think, is that, you know, I remember when I got started in this industry, 40 horsepower pumps were commonly found on a lot of machines. Like it was at, throw as much horsepower as you can at these things because the vacuum tables were so inefficient that you just weren't getting the air to the actual part. So they just, it's increased the pumps, right? Throw more pumps at it. And as the world has gotten more efficient in everything we do, you know, so is vacuum tables. We've become more efficient with the vacuum tables and we've developed some new, I mean, you've seen shop savers high flow vacuum table. You and I were, uh, I think it was a month ago you were here and I was doing some test cutting of some small plastic parts. I remember when you saw those parts, I remember us talking about, you know, the edge quality that we were showing and, and how small those parts were comparably to what, you know, you're typically going to see in the industry. It's we've been able to make strides with the technology. It was amazing. It was a finished product coming off the table. It was amazing. Yeah. And you know, it's because of, we've become so efficient with what we've done, with what we've done here. But the reality is the days of having to throw 40 horsepower pumps on these really are, are in the past. You don't see that too often anymore. You know, we've been able to do it with 10 and 50. I mean, realistically, Josh, we only buy, and I guess we should rephrase it because it's the new pumps are coming out. I know you guys just made some changes. It's going to be an 8.9 yep. now. So it's an yep. 8.9 vein style. And then we're going to have a 17.7. Is that right? It is, yeah. It, it does sound like it goes up in horsepower, but you know, manufacturing in Germany and, and German kilowatt versus the uh, versus HP, it's still using the exact same amount of energy yep. that the 15 horsepower pump would use, and that's kind of a little a little struggle for people to understand. How is yeah. that? It's a bigger motor. No, yeah. no, it, but it's still brake horsepower is how much that horsepower, how much energy is used to make that pump turn and do what it needs to do. Yeah, so, you stole my yeah. thunder there. I was just going to say is the cool thing is the horsepower went up a little bit, but the actual efficiency went you know, up as well with it because it's more efficient. At 17.7, it's actually using the same exact power as we were getting out of a I think he just hung up on me. What what happened? Well, I think we lost him. God, how? You said stole your thunder. I and stole he just thunder and he hung up on yeah, me. He's like, you can have all the thunder. You Bye. Want, you want to steal the thunder? Click, click. You can have Done it all. with you. And shop service price just went up on Becker Pumps. Man. Man, that was a tough crowd. Yeah, that was. Man. He said, forget you. Forget you is what forget he said. You. Carry this podcast on your own. Yeah. Maybe his phone died. Could be. I hope not. Maybe he ran out of minutes. Is that a thing? Do we use up all of his minutes? Or dial up your AOL minutes. Let's try him again here. I I I think you hung up on me. I think you got me angry at me because I said stole thunder and then you hung up on me. No, I just went silent. Bravo six. Going dark. Si- <laughs> Maybe we hung up. Maybe Jesse may have hung up on you. Maybe Jesse was sad because he wasn't getting to talk and he hung up on you. That's okay. I'm enjoying myself. <laughs> but yeah, it could have happened, Josh. Well, it's good. We're okay. Like I said, we'll keep rolling here. Um, we got you back on the phone. Hey, everybody, don't worry. Technical Josh difficulties. Josh is back. He's back. Josh is back. I'm we back. we started contemplating if our prices were going up on Becker pumps because we offended you. Oh, yeah, that happened. <laughs> <laughs> that was the uh, oops, mistakes there happened discount. So, yeah, no, no but uh, as we were talking about, you know, like I said, yeah, they're, they're, the efficiency rates of these pumps have really, you know, kind of increased, and it, it's been a real good thing for the industry because companies that couldn't afford to put vacuum tables in their shop before because they didn't have the power can now afford vacuum pumps. And, I mean, even along those lines, Josh, Remember when you and I talked the first time ever and you were like, you got to have three-phase power? Not the case anymore. Yeah, right, right. You don't need that anymore, you know? The the technology's changed and made things easier to do and uh, single-phase on uh, even those 250s for those four-by tables. It's been wonderful. Yeah, it's awesome. And we've been able to install industrial pumps in residential situations you know like it's great it gives people the opportunity and the freedom to really expand their business without you know spending a fortune i mean we've gotten customers that come up to us they're like oh the power company wants 30 grand to install three-phase power that's not practical like you're not going to do that jesse might do it though i thought about it yeah you thought about just yeah. installing some three-phase in your house yeah yeah I, yep. I, you liar uh, you're not installing three phase. You probably don't even know what three phase is, do you? <laughs> nah, I, I, yes, I do. Yes. You know, I have a rule about uh, things I can't see. I try not to play with things I Absolutely. can't see. Absolutely. Electricity is one of those things. Power is one things. of those things. I will end up, it's like Chevy Chase from Christmas Vacation. That's going to be me. 
as soon as I try to plug my lights in, you know, it's like zap. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, uh, you know, Josh, everybody hears you talking about it, and they, they now know you're the most knowledgeable guy in vacuum that's ever existed. But who's Josh Lancaster? Let's talk a little bit about Josh Lancaster. Who is he? Uh, all right, who is he? Um, I'm a, I, I went to college to become a teacher, and I taught inner city Cleveland for four years. And uh, a month away from my master's degree, they decided they didn't need so many teachers anymore, so I got laid off, and I, at that point, had to pick a new career. Um, my, uh, a lot of my family are all in sales, um, technical sales, industrial sales, software sales, all sorts of sales things. So it was kind of a natural fit. I went into some sales at that point. Um, and, uh, you know, I did finish my master's, de- my master's degree in education, um, which was good for me, but it didn't give me tenure and it didn't make a career out of the education uh, system. But um, it's, a, it's been a good change for me as far as that goes. So I've been in industrial sales um, on this side for, um, what am I going on, 13 years, just past 13 years. So I'm working in my 14th year into that. Um, awesome. Me personally, I uh, have two girls. Um, 11 and a six year old. Um, my Jesse, wife how old are your girls? Almost- I got one girl. Oh. Well, yeah, I have a boy who's nine, a girl who's okay. eight and a boy who's four. So you guys have kids in the same age. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Nice. And I'm married almost 20 years. Um, grew up in Northeast Ohio and now live in, uh, Southwest yeah, Ohio. Standing uh, ovation. Standing ovation. One, yeah. You made 20 standing years. That's o- awesome. <laughs> I think we yeah, both just hit yeah. 10 this year, didn't we? We hit 10 this year, yeah, yeah. Both of us hit 10, so you, you're twice as long as we are, so good for you. That's that's pretty impressive. <laughs> it's good. It's been a good 20 years. It gets better, I tell you that. What what advice do you have for two guys in that 10 years? <laughs> yeah. You shake your head yes and then do what you're told. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> I've learned that uh, about being in sales helps uh, – Helps the marriage. You have to sell yourself constantly. You have to just keep reassuring her that you're still you're still worth it. I go with the customer's yeah. always right approach. <laughs> That's yeah. why. Yeah. I have yeah. a sales guy that taught me uh, a good saying, and he's about to retire. Um, and he told me, "Josh, you're my manager. My boss is at home." <laughs> you're happy at home you're in good shape so that's I'm true taking that advice to heart. that's true that's the <laughs> truth right there. that's a good one i'm gonna have to go with that one from now on um so, why'd you choose becker specifically i mean it, it, you know obviously there's a lot of vacuum pumps out there and i'm sure with your knowledge in the industry you could choose any of the pump companies out there what, what about becker kind of you know really drew you in honestly just so you know my father worked for becker Oh, yeah? Um, so it's kind of a family thing, yeah. When I was going to college and going through high school, he started with Becker in uh, 1996 or so. Um, yeah, and it, that was his last 18 years before he passed away in 2015. So he had worked with Becker. And uh, I did some part-time at work at Becker when I was a teacher. I went and set up pumps at Becker. I put stuff together. I did shipping, you know, extra uh, stuff over holidays and summers. It was just an extra job, and I've been around the company forever. Um, that sounds really familiar. I like I, I somehow understand how that goes. Like, like maybe your dad works here. Yeah, like it's almost like my dad worked at Shop Saver. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. yeah <laughs> that happened. So you know, I never thought I'd be in sales or at Becker, yeah. and then you know, went up and then become a regional manager for Becker or anything. I was never the plan and you know i was always a you know, high school kid I, i'm not going into sales and you know <laughs> i'm making a career out of it and a life out of it and i'm loving every minute of it so yeah, yeah that's awesome, awesome. Yeah, yeah i mean the passion you have for what you do is kind of the, you know that's what we, we talk about jesse and i always talk about on these episodes is that, that what sets shop saber apart from our competition is that it's the passion behind the people that work here and we always talk about our vendors and you know we have that same passion you know for vendors we want vendors who truly care about their product and it's awesome listening to you talk because you're just as passionate about what you do as we are about what we do and that's really the you know talking about Becker and Shop Saber's relationship i really believe that's why pairing us together makes so much sense because you know you guys think you know the world of your own product, which is, is what we want. We don't want somebody who second guesses themselves ever. And, you know, we know what our machines can do. And, and I think the best thing for our customers is that both companies believe in themselves enough to where the customer is always going to win because at no point are either one of us going to allow our product to be, you know, less than, you know, perfection. I mean, do you not agree with that? 
No, absolutely, absolutely. I, I, you know, I agree with that. I have passion for the company and passionate for the pro- passion for the product. And you know, yes. um, I, I know where it's made. I've seen it all. I, you know, I touch everything. I mean, it's it's your shop where you guys make it. But you know, I've traveled to Germany on several occasions to see what we do and you know see their belief in Becker. You know, it's still a family family owned company and trustees and there's Dr. Becker yeah. is still in charge. Dr. Dorothy Becker after, you know, started eighteen eighty five and they're still Becker. Um, That's crazy. so you know I and I, I kinda think I'm legacy over here on the on the Becker pump side in the yeah. US, you know. My dad worked here, I'm here, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's it's, it's, uh, it's a loyalty to the company here. So, and, and you know, yeah. that says and something, right. though. I do have options, but yeah. it's my home. So. But I think that says something yeah. because the customer knows you're committed. You know, and that's the thing is that, you know, Absolutely. as you get started on this stuff, you know, let's talk about cutting speeds and finishes. You know, really, I think a lot of people lose sight of the fact that a machine might cut beautiful. But it's only as good as the parts being held on those tables. And if parts are vibrating, parts are moving around on you, you know, it kind of goes back to why we select Becker pumps is because it makes our machine cut better. You know, when we run into situations where, you know, we have put lesser pumps on our machines in certain price applications where customer maybe wants to settle or customers have provided their own pumps. And, you know, we do sell our machines vacuum ready where you can produce your own vacuum pump. And they'll call us up and say, it's just not cutting really well. And we tell them, you know, let's let's try just taping the part down or let's try putting some mechanical screws to the part. Well, it's going to wreck the part. I get it. We're going to throw one part away, but I, I want to try something here. And we, we have them mechanically fasten their, their sheet down or they do something to kind of stabilize it. And that's on the part, yeah, that cut beautiful. Well, it's a hold down issue. Your pumps aren't, aren't doing what they're supposed to. And that's where, you know, like you said, the passion that you guys have is you're passionate about the product because it works. And getting the right product in their shop makes them more passionate about what they do as well. That, that's exactly right. Yep. And then, you know, let's talk about, you Vers- know. Let's talk about versatility. Okay, yeah, let's talk about versatility. Yeah. You know, that's another thing. I mean, Becker pumps are pretty versatile in the fact that, I can set up for a nested application, but I can also do pod stuff, correct? I mean, Josh, you guys do a lot with the pod usage out there, too. Yeah, yeah, we do have, yeah, and yeah. And, uh, you know, strictly pod machine requires, I want to say, a little less flow as far yep. as that goes. Um, uh, not not vacuum level, per se, but, but yeah. some less flow there. So, correct. but yeah, you can... Yeah, yeah, we're on all sorts of machines, all sorts of over the all over the place. So, yeah. yeah. And the versatility on our end is the nice thing is, a guy can buy a machine with a, a th- flow through vacuum table and they can create a fixture board and actually utilize that Becker. You know, we have a lot of guys running those 250 pumps, you know, the VTLF 250s, and they're running nested application 90% of the time, but they got to throw something up there. You know, I got a guy that cuts, you know, uh, uh, violins actually is what he's cutting, I believe, and he's doing the, the necks uh, all on a fixture that he created in, in the Becker pump because it's got so much pressure by utilizing that fixture, it allows him to hold down those violin necks without having to change machines. So he's got one machine that does all the work that he has to throw at it in a single day. Yep, it's all vacuum and flow. You got it. There it is. So, (laughs) Josh, I got a couple questions on the pods. It's not something that we deal with a lot of the time, but what are the benefits to the Becker with the pod system? Uh, It's, uh, it's, I don't know that there's any benefit. Um, you know, I'm not that familiar with the, the pod system, to be honest with you. I haven't had a strictly OEM that, you know, I've worked with pods too too terribly often. Um, you know, I, I know they're out there, um, but it's it's still, it's it's wood, it's flow, it's vacuum. We deal with the sawdust, we deal with the things. Yeah. So, I mean, I can't compare it much to anything out there um as far as different technologies different pumps well you know what you gave the answer that we wanted you to give because we wanted to show people that pods are a thing of the past you don't see a lot of it anymore and and that's kind of why we asked the question is because we don't even get into it that often and we don't always have the answer on that because guys who are doing pod stuff are are few and far between i mean most people have switched over to the nested applications i mean am i correct on that josh that's your guys's bread and butter yeah no you're absolutely that's why our familiarity the farther i get away the farther we get away from it it's kind of like i don't i don't remember how to do that stuff (laughs) guys using pods like the guy is still writing g code by hand yeah like you just don't have to use pod i mean there are some applications where you have to i mean let's be honest but they're few and far between the majority of people can get by with nesting and you know as you start getting into that 
really, that's what makes these machines more affordable nowadays is that you have a machine that can do all kinds of different things from one setup. And, and back in the day, you used to have to have a pod and rail machine and you had to have a, you know, a mill for this and that, you know, you don't have that anymore. You have one machine that does a magnitude of different things, you know, all from the same thing with that same Becker pump. You're not switching different machines and different setups. You're, you're running three or four CNC routers because you're running production and they all are running Becker pumps. Yep. Yep. And then, you know, we're going to, you know, I, I guess Josh, I'm going to open it up to you, I guess. Is there anything that we didn't let you talk about that you want to talk about before we jump into a little segment here that we call rapid fire and we get to ask you some questions and essentially it comes down to where, you just got to give us the answer of what comes to mind first for those questions. It has nothing to do with vacuum, by the way. Nothing to do with vacuum. <laughs> oh, great. Great. Yeah. Now, but now before now we get into rapid fire, is get there anything about... my element, guys. I, I'm sorry. We, we do that to people. Before we get into it, though, do you have anything about Becker you want to share that we didn't give you... We want to give you the floor. No. You know, you guys cover. We have a great partnership, and I think that's key, and I, we have an understanding and, a, and a, you know, a great working relationship, and, you know, I, I think... Becker's the number one name in woodworking on the market, and Shop Saber is that as well. So, yeah, we're doing fantastic together. It's been a great partnership. So, awesome. um, yeah, I'm ready for the fast fire questions. All right, you're here ready. we go. You sure you're ready for All this? All right, here we go. So, uh, I think we're going to let Jesse kick it off. I'd have uh, Garrett jump in here, but uh, Garrett forgot his mic again this week, so this is going well. Are you done talking now? So by his Zap no. Matt with yeah. his passy and his sippy cup. Yeah, it, don't worry, though. Josh brought his, his mic today. So, um, all right, we're ready. ready for this, Josh? Ready for this? Let's go, Jesse, you're up. Pepsi or Coke? Do we lose them? Josh, this is rapid fire. Pepsi or Coke? Oh, Coke. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't hear it. Josh is like, I don't know the answer to this question. He was trying to, he was Googling it. Um, all right. Donuts or waffles? These all for me. These are all These for are you. All for you. Uh, donuts. All right. That was a really random question. I know. I, had some other, I thought of waffles again. That's why. Favorite movie? I, I missed what you said again. Something of a hoopty? Favorite? <laughs> <laughs> yes. What's your favorite hoopty? <laughs> no. What's your favorite movie? Oh, Shawshank. Shawshank. Ooh, that's a good movie. That I is like, a solid one. Movie. Yeah. Um, favorite non pornographic website? Uh, ESPN. Wrong answer, Josh. It's always shop. It's always shop. It's always shop. Oh. Uh, it's all right. We'll give you a pass on that one. Favorite place to vacation? Oh, uh, Canada. Ooh, that's that's pretty. That's a cool that's place. Bold. That's you know. There's a lot of outdoorsy stuff there. There are. That's there what is. it is. That's awesome. Oh, um, I love the fish. Yeah, I don't get that much in Ohio. You guys are spoiled up there. We do. We have lakes everywhere. But that's an awesome answer. I love that answer. Um, favorite sport. Uh, right now, running. Running. That sounds that's terrible. That's a good training for a marathon. That's, so that's oh, that's favorite. that's right. I forgot to say that. Josh runs marathons. He's one of those guys that like, I run to this refrigerator and I stop. He just keeps going. He you goes make, all the way to the supermarket. You make it all the way to the fridge without stopping? Well, I, I usually take have to two, stop yeah. at like the island. Yeah, and I, I take two breaks between there. I'm a short distance runner. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so cookies with milk or cookies with no milk. With milk. That's right. You're a good man. Oh, I'm really failing on that one. So, Josh, we have this ongoing thing about cookies with milk because... And Jesse's winning this by a long Jesse's shot. Jesse's winning it by a long shot. I'm, I don't, I'm not a cookies and milk guy. I'm cookies by themselves. And Real. I thought it was weird to be cookies and milk on everything, but everybody's cookies and milk, so I'm losing this deal. I, I what, believe that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's your, uh, what's your favorite genre of music? Got him. Oh, that's tough. I, I can I can say a decade, but I don't know. That's fine. Go a decade. Right we'll switch now. it up. I'll do the nineties. Nineties. All right. That's good. Some good music in the nineties. What's your favorite TV show? Oh, what do I got on right now? Uh, <laughs> Deadliest Catch. Ooh, Deadliest Catch. Fair enough. I like Deadliest Catch. Yeah, I always thought about that. Like, 
I want to go be on Deadliest Catch. And then I remembered I'd fall off the boat and drown. I want to be in that alone yeah, show where they drop you off. Yeah, all in the I, don't, woods. I don't want to work that hard. Those guys look like they suffer every yeah, day. Yeah, those, those guys look guy. like they work a lot harder than me, so I don't want to do that. Did you <laughs> say you right. want to be on Naked and Afraid? Is that what no, I No, I didn't say <laughs> Naked and Afraid, but uh, that would be all right, I too. Jesse I want to be on that naked. alone show. Oh, have you, seen, have you seen that, Josh, that alone in Alaska where they drop them off in the woods? I haven't watched it. I know what you're talking about, but yeah, I have not watched that. No, I can't do that either. Yeah. No, I, I, I realized after watching that that I wouldn't make it three days before I called or died. I'd get eaten by a bear. Yeah, see, you know uh, Michael Scott in the office when he went in the wilderness with the duct tape. Uh, that'd probably be me. Yeah, I think that's where Shop Saber's yeah. name came from, Saber. <laughs> um, I'm running out of questions here. You got you fired through them so I, I don't have any other in my paper here so i'm out of i'm out of questions you got another one yeah what's your favorite food oh 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 jeez that's a good one um and it's so hard something i can't have right now steak steak that's why can't you have steak ah uh, I, i've been uh I've been eating plant based for you know training for good a marathon. for you I've been yeah way to go for a while yeah that's now, awesome so, yeah it takes some dedication I'll tell you what I just got off of keto and when you alter your heat your eating patterns it's like your world gets turned upside down and then it takes a lot to get yourself to stick to it so good for you for sticking there yeah, yeah I, I could never September, do it so it's been a long time without a steak or any of that oh, dead meat can't, have, I can't imagine it, it. I got a I got a smoker outside, and I do ribs and chicken and all sorts of stuff, and I just haven't done I'm anything. I'm going to Josh's house. cauliflower. Yep. That sounds fun. Cauliflower uh, wings, right? Yeah. No, no, the cauliflower wings? <laughs> it sounds terrible right now. I'm going to be honest with you, but I want to come to your I house. I just threw up in my mouth. No, you didn't. Yeah, I did. A no little bit. So. You could probably hear that in the mic. You catch that, Garrett? <laughs> <laughs> I want some cookies and some waffles. That's yeah, what I want. Yeah, some cake. Um, oh, cake. Cheesecake. Yeah. Cake or, like... cake or pie, Josh? Oh, pie. It's okay that he got to go twice. I'm, I'm good. You um, said you had no more questions. Let's ask one. everyone out I thought there. of one. Did Brandon say, Jesse, keep going? I have no more questions. Maybe. <laughs> um, <laughs> what? Uh, are, you, are you a chocolate cake or cheesecake guy? Ah, uh, cheesecake. Yeah, everybody loves everybody cheesecake. Loves everybody loves cheesecake. some cheesecake. Favorite color? Yeah. Uh, blue. Yeah, because yeah. the shop's in colors. Because the shop's makes sense. That makes sense. Totally makes sense. Um, What's your favorite hobby? My favorite what? Hobby. Hobby. Um, golf, but I'm terrible at it right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not very good at that either. There's a, there's a little rule I have that I try to keep it. You know, I try not to do it unless it's, you know, under 80 but it's only when it's under 80 degrees not my actual score so <laughs> i'm uh, i'm pretty yeah, bad at that two, two little girls two little girls uh hampers your golf game so yeah I, yeah. I, I yeah my not just struggle every time anymore so yeah my two boys play hockey so they usually end up turning the golf club into a weapon against each other so i try to keep them away from those <laughs> things but uh yeah, yeah i think uh, i'm out of rapid fire questions jesse you out of rapid fire questions I think that's all I got, Josh. That's all I got. Josh, we appreciate you joining us today. Well, thanks for having me, guys. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, so no, we appreciate having you. And like I said, uh, anybody who wants to learn more about Becker Pumps, you can uh, obviously check them out. Uh, you know, Becker's website's full of information, or you can call Jesse, call us here at ShopSaver. We can even connect you with Josh if you have questions specifically for Josh. I know he's always open to talking to people. Correct, Josh? Absolutely. Yep, that's what I do. My, cool. That's what I do all day long. Yep. Awesome. Well, we appreciate sure. your time today, Josh. All right. Thanks, Brandon. Thanks, Jesse. Thanks. You guys Take have care. Good time to you, Josh. All right. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. That was fun, right? There he goes. Yeah, that was. That was a good time. Yeah, he hung up on us once. So that was cool. Yep. What can't he, say we didn't deserve it? <laughs> yeah. He did a really good job at rapid fire. Yeah. He made me feel bad about myself because he is healthier than me. Way healthier than us. Better shape than us. Yeah. Because he runs, yeah. and neither one and of us we, he's doing probably around. more attractive than the two of us too. I well, gotta say he's got us beat all. Yeah, around. he's got to beat us all around. He's he's also not three feet shorter than a Smurf like me, so he's got some height too. I'm not much taller than you, to be honest. Yeah, so I mean he's he's just kicking our butt all over the place, and he knows a lot about vacuum. Sure does. Yeah, so hopefully you know today we learned a little bit about vacuum. Talked about hold down the different pumps and kind of how it works, but you know the one thing about vacuum is we could sit here and talk about vacuum for the next two hours. 
I'd be sleeping, but you can keep talking about yeah, it. Yeah, and we wouldn't scratch the surface. That's the sad right. part. There's so much about vacuum. But yeah. what I want people to realize is that you know, the, the main takeaways from this is the different pumps. There's different pumps for different applications. Yep. Don't assume that whatever pump you have is going to work for all applications. Yeah, it's not one size fits all. Yep. Make sure you got the right pump for the table size you're working with. Make sure the materials that the salesman, if the salesman that you're talking to isn't asking you what you're cutting, how you're cutting it, your expectations, they're not selling you the right thing. Right. The reality is that they better be understanding who, who and what you do. I mean, that's the one thing shop saver asks every time is what are you doing? We want to learn about your business. We ask, do you have single or three-phase power? For that reason, we need to know which pump configuration works for you. Yep. So, you know, you have to learn a little bit about it. And then if you don't know how vacuum works and you're not understanding how it works, call us. Let our team explain to you kind of how it works a little bit further. Like I said, we can get into the, where CFM or HG is going to matter. We can explain which pump's going to be necessary, how it's going to hold your material down. You know, really, if you can't hold it down. You can't cut it. You can't cut it. Exactly. You nailed it. So, you know, it's been a lot of fun today. Like I said, we got to do a lot of cool things. I'm Brandon. I'm Jesse. Thanks for talking shop with ShopSaver. Saver.